Hey there, boaters. I'm Captain Stacy Hanrahan, and this is The Boaters TV. Coming up in smooth sailing, homeschooling at sea in this week's Mad Mariner Report. Homeschooling your children is a big responsibility. In addition to being a parent, you must be the principal and the teacher as well. And as you can imagine, homeschooling aboard adds even more challenges. But as Mad Mariner's Michelle Snow tells us, along with the challenges come many advantages. Michelle boat schools her two children, ages eight and four, aboard the Sea Gypsy because of, she says, her husband's obsession with sailboats. And after two years, she knows what works and what doesn't. She suggests future homeschoolers to begin before setting sail. It's important to check with your home port state about how home educators are regulated. And beginning on land gives you time to figure out what materials will be needed so you can purchase them in advance. Michelle schools her kids at least three hours each day, Monday through Saturday, Saturday being an optional makeup day. The flexible scheduling of boat schooling is ideal when doing an offshore passage. Having school on the high seas isn't very convenient, so when they're back in port, having the option of teaching on the weekend helps them play catch up. Michelle says to make sure you've got someone available to give you a break from schooling. Having her husband step in is like having a substitute teacher. Unfortunately, boat schooled kids who are constantly on the move don't get the chance to be on a soccer team or take up karate, but they do get to see things they wouldn't in a traditional classroom. Flaying a fish can be an impromptu science lesson. To read more about Michelle's experiences as a homeschooler, go to www.madmariner.com. Up next, Sport Fishing Magazine's Dr. Bob Ship is giving us the fish facts on blue marlin. Blue marlins have become an important source of income for many third world countries. To us sports fishermen, the reason is obvious. Chasing the blue marlin is great sport, but it's not a cheap sport. The coastal countries of Central America have become very aware of this, and promoting big game bill fishing is one of their most popular attractions. But for these countries, this has caused an economic transformation that has important implications for the world's bill fish stocks. For many of these countries, before the advent of major sports fishing promotions, fish like blue marlin were primarily a food source. Since many of these countries have very deep water adjacent to the coastline, native fishermen could successfully harvest them and they were highly esteemed for their meat. This along with an intense longline fishery helped deplete the numbers of the blue and other marlins. Now, since they are recognized as such a valuable resource alive and in large numbers, these countries have enacted safeguards for the stocks and the local charter guides are most happy to focus on tag and release for these marine giants. But biologically, there are some really neat things about blue marlin. One is the great disparity in size between males and females. Females grow up to four times the size of the males, often reaching weights up to 1,400 pounds. We don't know the reason for this great size differential, but perhaps it has to do with the greater size means a greater number of eggs can be produced, and each female can produce tens of millions of eggs. Although worldwide blue marlins are currently overfished, there's strong reason to think they can make a comeback. For Sport Fishing Magazine TV, I'm Dr. Bob Schiff. Thanks to Sport Fishing TV for that report. For more fish facts, go to www.sportfishingmag.com. Now it's time to answer yesterday's Rules of the Road question. The question was, inland only. Which is true of a power-driven vessel bound downstream when meeting an upbound vessel on the western rivers? A. She has the right of way. B. She shall propose the manner of passage. C. She shall initiate maneuvering signals. D. All of the above. And the answer is D. All of the above. Rule 9, which discusses narrow channels, states that the vessel proceeding upbound against the current shall hold as necessary to permit safe passing. Makes sense, right? If you've ever driven a boat in a current, you know it's a lot easier to control your vessel when the bow is heading into the current than it is with the current pushing you from astern. In just a moment, we'll have today's Rules of the Road question for you. Tune in tomorrow for the answer. For TBTV, I'm Captain Stacy. 
Bon voyage!